Hello from Who Died Today America and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Pat Haywood, a distinguished Scottish actress celebrated for her dynamic roles in film and television, passed away at the age of 92 on June 26th. Born on August 1, 1931, in Gretna Green, Scotland, Haywood's illustrious career spanned over four decades, during which she captivated audiences with her versatility and depth. Haywood made an unforgettable film debut in Franco Zeffirelli's 1968 adaptation of Romeo and Juliet, portraying the nurse and confidant to Olivia Hussey's Juliet. Her performance not only won her critical acclaim, but also a BAFTA nomination, helping the film achieve success both critically and at the box office. This role firmly established her as a formidable talent in the film industry. Her career was marked by a series of notable performances, including the maid in Freddie Francis's horror comedy, Mumsy, Nanny, Sonny and Gurley, and the wife of Richard Attenborough's John Christie in 10 Rillington Place. Haywood's filmography also included memorable roles in Goodbye, Mr. Chips, Young Winston, and Wish You Were Here, showcasing her ability to transcend genres and bring complex characters to life. Beyond the silver screen, Haywood's talent shone brightly on television. She starred in the 1976 ITV sitcom Lucky Feller, the 1978 BBC miniseries adaptation of Wuthering Heights, and a 1987 episode of the BBC anthology series, Screen 2, penned by Michael Palin. Her dedication to the craft was evident in every role she undertook, leaving a lasting impact on audiences and colleagues alike. Educated at Bristol Old Vic Theatre School, Haywood also had a robust stage career, performing extensively with the theatre company and featuring in a long-running London production of the musical Salad Days, Married to actor Oliver Neville, who was the head of the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art from 1984 to 1993 until his death in 2021, Haywood is survived by her daughter, Sarah Neville, who continues the family's artistic legacy. Pat Haywood's contributions to the arts celebrated the richness of human experience, making her a beloved figure in British cinema and theater. Her legacy will endure through her profound interpretations of myriad characters, each brought to life with integrity and passion. Whitney Rydbeck, a versatile and beloved American actor known for his contributions to both television and film, passed away on July 15th at the age of 79 due to complications from prostate cancer. His career, rich with over 50 television and motion picture credits, made him a familiar face to audiences across generations. Rydbeck's roles spanned a variety of genres, showcasing his ability to adapt and captivate in any setting. He graced the television screens with memorable appearances on shows such as Scrubs, Seventh Heaven, and Star Trek The Next Generation, each time bringing a unique blend of charisma and authenticity that endeared him to viewers. His portrayal of Whitney in the children's program, Whitney and the Robot, marked a significant part of his career, highlighting his versatility and appeal to younger audiences. His film roles were equally notable, with performances in Battle Beyond the Stars, a very Brady sequel, and the cult classic Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. His voice work in Oliver and Company further demonstrated his range and talent contributing to a beloved animated classic. Beyond the screen, Rydbeck's impact was felt by those who worked alongside him. Known for his professionalism and warmth, he was a mentor and friend to many in the industry, leaving behind a legacy of kindness and dedication that enriched the lives of those he encountered. As the entertainment community mourns his passing, they also celebrate the legacy of a man who not only entertained, 
but brought joy and laughter to countless fans. Whitney Rydbeck will be remembered not just for the roles he played, but for the spirit he brought to his work and the indelible mark he left on the world of entertainment. Betty Ann Reese, a character actress known for her portrayals of formidable and often unkind women in the gritty cinema of the 1970s, passed away at her home in Hemet, California, on July 17th, at the age of 81. Her niece, Kathleen Laux, cited a series of falls and a possible stroke as contributing factors. Reese had also been battling multiple sclerosis since the early 1990s. Born on April 14, 1943, in Shaker Heights, Ohio, Reese brought a unique presence to every role she embodied. Her journey into acting led her from the University of Miami to intensive study at the Pasadena Playhouse. Her career in entertainment spanned several decades, featuring roles in a variety of television series including My Three Sons, where she played Janet Ingram in the show's final season, and The FBI, along with appearances on Mannix and Lou Grant. Reese shone brightly in the world of film, particularly within the B-movie circuit of the 1970s. She delivered memorable performances in films like The Unholy Rollers and Sugar Hill, both emblematic of the era's vibrant exploitation genre. In The Unholy Rollers, directed by Vernon Zimmerman and edited by Martin Scorsese, Reese stood out as Mickey Martinez, a roller derby star clashing with a team newcomer. Her role in Sugar Hill, a cult favorite in the black exploitation genre, saw her as Celeste, a character whose dramatic arc culminates in a memorable supernatural confrontation. Beyond the screen, Reese was an entrepreneur and innovator. After retiring from acting, she managed Gloria Marshall figure salons, designed kitchens, and even invented the playful executive teething ring during the 1980s. Reese's legacy extends beyond her film and television work, remembered by those who knew her for her vibrant spirit and kindness. She leaves behind her sister, Barbara, a nephew, Brian, and her beloved cats, Honey Bear and Lovey, who now need a new home. Her life, marked by diverse pursuits and memorable roles, remains a testament to her resilience and versatility. Betty Ann Reese's contributions to the arts and her community will not be forgotten, encapsulating a spirited journey through both her professional and personal life. Richard Ferrangi, whose remarkable journey from a troubled past to a storied acting career left an indelible mark on both film and television, passed away at the age of 86. Born on August 3, 1937 in Brooklyn, New York, Foranji's early life was far from the glamorous world he would eventually inhabit. Before his acting career, he worked as a butcher and had encounters with the law, including a conviction for armed robbery. Foranji's cinematic debut came in the acclaimed film Serpico, where he had a small role. However, he is perhaps best remembered for his portrayal of mobsters, a typecast he both embodied and subverted with his dynamic performances. He played Tony Darvo in the 1988 hit Midnight Run and Peter Amadeso in Brian De Palma's Carlito's Way. His role as Detective Joe Marinaro in Sidney Lumet's Prince of the City showcased his ability to bring depth and complexity to his characters, earning him recognition and acclaim. One of his most memorable lines came from the cult classic Repo Man, in which he played Arnold Plechner, a rent-a-cop with a gritty past. His portrayal brought a raw, authentic edge to the film, making his character a fan favorite. Later in life, Ferranji shared his unique life experiences and insights into the acting world in his memoir, From the Mob to the Movies, published on October 8, 2020. His writings provided a candid look at his transformations and triumphs, offering inspiration and a fascinating glimpse into the intersections of life and art. In retirement, Ferranji resided in the Hudson Valley of New York, where he lived quietly away from the limelight. His passing marks the end of a remarkable chapter in the history of American cinema, one characterized by personal redemption and artistic success. 
Richard Ferrangi's legacy will endure through his impactful performances and the powerful stories he told both on and off the screen. Shannon Doherty, a remarkable American actress and director, passed away from cancer at her home in Malibu, California, on July 13th at the age of 53. Doherty's career spanned a wide array of iconic television and film roles, leaving an indelible mark on Hollywood and its audiences. Born on April 12, 1971, in Memphis, Tennessee, Doherty's passion for acting blossomed early. She gained prominence as a child actress with roles in Little House on the Prairie and Our House. However, it was her portrayal of Heather Duke in the dark comedy Heathers and Brenda Walsh in the teen drama Beverly Hills, 90210, that catapulted her to stardom. Her role as Prue Hallowell in Charmed further solidified her place as a beloved figure in television history. Doherty's career was not without its challenges, including publicized disputes and health battles. Despite this, she continued to work in the industry she loved, taking roles in various projects, including the 90210 spin-off and the satirical series BH90210. Her resilience in the face of adversity was admired by many. Beyond acting, Doherty was a passionate advocate for cancer awareness, sharing her own battle with the disease to help others. Her openness about her health struggles provided strength and inspiration to many facing similar fights. Doherty's legacy extends beyond her film and television achievements. She was known for her spirited personality, her courage in the face of personal trials, and her unwavering determination. As Hollywood and her fans reflect on her contributions to entertainment, Shannon Doherty will be remembered as a talented actress who brought depth and authenticity to every role she played. Her passing is a profound loss to the entertainment world, and she will be deeply missed by all who knew her and were touched by her performances. John Landau, an influential American film producer known for his pivotal role in creating some of the highest grossing films of all time, passed away at the age of 63. As the producer of iconic films such as Titanic and Avatar, Landau left an indelible mark on the world of cinema. Born on July 23, 1960 in New York City, Landau was destined for a career in film, being the son of Edie, a producer, and Ely A. Landau, a studio executive. He honed his craft at the USC School of Cinematic Arts, preparing for a career that would see him influence the global film industry profoundly. His work at 20th Century Fox, and later at James Cameron's production company, Lightstorm, showcased his remarkable talent for overseeing blockbuster productions. Landau's collaboration with James Cameron began with True Lies, but reached its zenith with Titanic in 1997. This film not only won him an Academy Award for Best Picture, but also became a cultural phenomenon, setting records with its monumental box office success. The film was the first to reach $1 billion in gross revenues and set a new standard for epic filmmaking. Landau's vision and dedication were integral to the film's groundbreaking use of technology and storytelling. His commitment to innovation continued with the sequel, Avatar, The Way of Water, helping to ensure its success and cementing his legacy as a producer who redefined modern cinema. Outside of his professional life, Landau was a devoted husband to Julie for nearly 40 years and a loving father to his two sons, Jamie and Jody. His personal warmth and professional acumen made him a central figure in his film, Family, and the broader industry. James Cameron, reflecting on Landau's impact, described him as the heart of the Avatar family and the center of gravity of our bubble universe, underscoring the deep personal and professional bonds formed over decades of collaboration. John Landau's passing is a significant loss to the film industry. His visionary work will continue to inspire filmmakers and audiences alike, ensuring his place in the annals of film history as a producer who was truly larger than life. Richard Simmons, an energetic beacon of fitness and health who spent his career devoted to helping others feel good about themselves, passed away on July 13th 
at the age of 76. Known for his vibrant personality and colorful attire, Simmons became an iconic figure in the fitness world with his unique approach to exercise that included a genuine care for his participants' emotional well-being. Born Milton Teagle Simmons on July 12, 1948 in New Orleans, Louisiana, Richard faced his own struggles with obesity early in life, which inspired his lifelong passion for health and fitness. He moved to Los Angeles in the 1970s, where he opened Slimmons, a gym that became a sanctuary for those who felt marginalized by the conventional fitness scene. His gym was a place where everyone could seek help and support in their fitness journeys without judgment. Simmons burst into the cultural landscape with appearances on television and later through his own show, The Richard Simmons Show, which combined exercise with his infectious charm and compassion. He became best known for his Sweatin' to the Oldies workout series, which invited people of all ages and fitness levels to get moving to the rhythm of classic hits. Beyond his fitness empire, Simmons was a tireless advocate for various causes, including non-competitive physical education in schools and broader access to health resources. His dedication to public service was interwoven with his entertainment career, making him a beloved figure both on and off the screen. Richard Simmons was more than just a fitness guru. He was a friend to those he taught and a hero to many who felt overlooked by society. His legacy of kindness, enthusiasm, and unwavering support for the well-being of others will live on in the millions of lives he touched. He will be remembered not only for his spirited aerobics classes, but for his incredible ability to connect with people and make them feel loved, accepted, and capable of achieving their best selves. Michael Mosley, a trailblazer in medical journalism and a steadfast advocate for public health education, passed away unexpectedly at the age of 67. Born in Calcutta, India, on March 22, 1957, Mosley's rich heritage and international upbringing deeply influenced his expansive view of medical science and health communication. Educated at Haleybury College and New College, Oxford, Mosley originally pursued a career in banking before a profound shift led him to medicine and eventually journalism. His work at the BBC began in 1985, where he quickly became known for his ability to translate complex medical knowledge into engaging, understandable content for the public. His series like Medical Mavericks, Trust Me, I'm a Doctor, and the story of science not only educated but also captivated audiences with their depth and accessibility. Mosley's personal journey with health, particularly his advocacy for the 5-2 intermittent fasting method and low-carbohydrate diets, influenced millions worldwide. His books, including The Fast Diet and The Fast 800 Keto, have left a lasting impact on the fields of diet and nutrition, merging scientific research with practical advice. Beyond his contributions to nutrition and exercise, Mosley was also at the forefront of discussions on mental health and the importance of sleep, sharing his personal challenges and solutions in the hope of aiding others. His work extended beyond television and books into impactful documentaries and insightful radio series, which explored the nuances of medical science and human physiology. Mosley's legacy is defined not only by his commitment to demystifying science, but also by his deep humanity and curiosity. His ability to communicate complex ideas with clarity and enthusiasm made him a beloved figure. As we remember Michael Mosley, we celebrate a man who dedicated his life to improving others' health and well-being through education, advocacy, and storytelling. His untimely departure is a profound loss to the field of science communication, leaving behind a body of work that will continue to inspire curiosity and foster well-being for generations to come. Breaking news of the day. News 1. Steven Siegel's trajectory from Hollywood action star to a Kremlin enthusiast is a narrative as dramatic as his films. Recently spotted at Vladimir Putin's inauguration for a fifth term, Siegel's presence among notable figures like Chechen leader Ramzan Kadyrov 
highlighted his continued peculiar alliance with Russian leadership. Siegel, who became a Russian citizen in 2016, has often praised Putin and Russian policies publicly, aligning himself with the Kremlin in ways that have sparked controversy and curiosity worldwide. His journey from the bright lights of Hollywood to the corridors of Russian power has been marked by his vocal support for Russia's actions, including its military operations in Ukraine and his reception of the Order of Friendship from Moscow. Despite his acclaim in action cinema during the late 20th century, Siegel's affiliations and activities in recent years have painted a complex picture of a man navigating the confluence of entertainment and political advocacy. His role in Russian cultural and political spheres illustrates a significant, though unconventional, chapter in the life of a Western celebrity within Eastern geopolitics. News 2. Former New York Yankees infielder and beloved coach Mike Ferraro passed away last Saturday at the age of 79, the team announced. While the cause of death has not been disclosed, Ferraro's legacy within baseball remains notable. Known for his sharp tactical mind and dedication to the game, Ferraro made his mark not only as a player, but also as a coach and manager within the Yankees organization and beyond. He played for the Yankees in 1966 and 1968, and famously tied an MLB record for third baseman with 11 assists in a single nine-inning game during a victory over the Senators. After retiring in 1972, Ferraro quickly transitioned to managing, where he led teams to pennants at the Class A, AA, and AAA levels. His organizational skills were lauded by many, including former Yankees president Gabe Paul, who once noted Ferraro's ability to instill fundamental baseball skills in young players. Ferraro's coaching career was punctuated by his time as a Yankees coach during the 1980 ALCS. His decision to wave Willie Randolph home, a move that resulted in a critical out, became a famous controversy. Despite the ups and downs, Ferraro's impact on the game was profound culminating in a World Series win with the Kansas City Royals in 1985. Ferraro is survived by his two children, two grandchildren, and a brother, leaving behind a storied legacy that has touched many in the baseball community.